Hello everyone and welcome to this video lecture. In this video I will show you how we can use remote sensing data for assessing biophysical water productivity factors. First of all, what is biophysical water productivity? Biophysical water productivity generally means biomass production or crop yield per unit of water consumption. Improving biophysical water productivity means to produce more crop per drop. How can we improve it? We can improve water productivity either by reducing crop water consumption without decrease in crop yield or increase in crop yield without increase in water consumption. So when we talk about factors affecting water productivity, it means factors that actually affect either crop yield or water consumption. There are multiple factors that affect water productivity. Some are internal factors that are related to crop genetics and other are external factors such as climatic, management, edophic, biotic and physiographic. In order to improve water productivity, we have to identify the influence of these factors on crop yield production or water consumption. How can we use remote sensing data to assess biophysical water productivity factors? First of all, I will talk about its core principles. Remotely sensed spectral reflectance is associated with specific biophysical and biochemical vegetation characteristics. The spectral response is directly or indirectly proportional to the vegetation characteristic. Thus, we can capture dynamics in crop growth using this relationship between spectral response and vegetation characteristic. Different spectral reflectances are combined together to make indices. These indices can be used as indicators of factors affecting water productivity. For example, <clears throat> normalized difference moisture index is combination of spectral reflectances in near infrared and short wave infrared spectral domains, which can be used to identify plant water content. There are thousands of remote sensing based indices. Most of them are compiled in the index database accessible at the link shown below. You might have a question. Can we identify all kind of water productivity factors using remote sensing data? The answer is no. Some factors cannot be sensed remotely, such as crop genetic factors or socioeconomic factors. Such factors require field work or interviews. You also might have a question, what factors and what indicators we should consider in our study? It entirely depends on the availability of the data, research interest, area coverage, and time frame of the research. In this table, you see on the, on the right side indicators that can be used for a particular water productivity factor listed on the left. Remember that there could be multiple indicators that can be used to identify a particular water productivity factor. The choice of selection is based on the accuracy of the indicator and availability of the data to calculate that specific indicator. Now we know about what productivity factors and remote sensing based indicators. Let me show you some examples. This map shows normalized difference moisture index of Beka Valley in Lebanon, which is an indicator of plant water content. This indicator is calculated based on remote sensing data acquired from Sentinel-2. The map shows that variability in plant water content across the valley and at the field level is well captured. A closer look of the map shows that plant water content of the crop fields with standing vegetation is shown quite distinct than that of the fellow crop fields. 
Remote sensing based indicators can be used in different ways by using different data analysis techniques to identify and assess factors that affect waterfall activity. You already know from the previous slides that NDMI index detects plant water content and therefore it can be used as a proxy of irrigation water supply. In this slide, I'm going to show you how we can use NDMI index to assess influence of irrigation water supply on net primary production or biomass production. This graph shows that from sowing time up to the booting stage, there are some changes in leaf water content, or you can say irrigation water supply. But at the same time, changes in net primary production is almost zero. This means that changes in irrigation supply has not affected crops in terms of biomass production. But from this stage onward, you can see that changes in irrigation supply is decreasing. But at the same time, changes in biomass production is very high. This means that at this stage, minor changes in irrigation supply can bring significant changes in biomass production. To better understand that how biomass production is changing in relation to irrigation water supply, look at this stress sensitivity index. It is calculated by dividing changes in NPP or biomass production or changes in NDMI or irrigation supply. Stress sensitivity index of the wheat crop from sowing up to the wooding stage is zero. This means that changes in irrigation supply does not cause significant changes in biomass production. But in wooding, flowering and grain filling stages, this index is very high. This means that minor changes in irrigation supply can lead to significant changes in biomass production. Such analyses are very important to identify critical crop growth stages and to avoid water stress in those critical stages in order to prevent huge yield losses. In this example, I'm going to show you how another remote sensing based indicator, irrigation heterogeneity, is affecting water productivity factors. Irrigation heterogeneity is denoted by CVET, which is coefficient of variation of evapotranspiration. Yield is denoted by Y, and water productivity is denoted by WP. A larger and red circle is showing higher negative correlation, while a larger and blue circle is showing higher positive correlation. There is a negative correlation between wheat yield and irrigation heterogeneity. This means that wheat yield is negatively impacted by irrigation heterogeneity. We have same findings for potato crop. This means that potatoes yield is also negatively impacted by irrigation heterogeneity. We also have a very important finding that what productivity of potato as well as wheat is not correlated with irrigation heterogeneity. This means that what productivity of both crops is not impacted by irrigation heterogeneity. Another finding is that what productivity and yield is positively correlated for both crops, but this correlation is more obvious and larger in potatoes as compared to wheat. Let me show you another interesting example. In this example, I want to show you how spatial variations and trends across irrigation scheme can help us identify factors affecting water productivity. In this example, we have divided whole irrigation scheme along irrigation canal from upstream to downstream in 10 portions. The map shows that rice yield in the Odian irrigation scheme in Mali is decreasing from upstream to downstream. This graph further illustrates the situation. 
rice yield from around 3.1 ton per hectare at the head end of the canal decreases below 2.7 ton per hectare downstream. This reduction in rice yield along the canal reach could be due to differences in irrigation water supply, irrigation practices, irrigation technology, or crop variety. You can think of more factors. In order to diagnose the root cause of this yield reduction, we have to make use of other remote sensing based indicators or field information. Thank you for your attention and good luck with the rest of the course.